All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am very excited to have our first trading session here at our cons new location on Consumers Road. So Remax Ace and 150 Consumers Road. I'm Christine Bolin here with Blair White this morning. He's from Amerispec. He's an excellent home inspector. If you guys are looking for someone who's really thorough to do your home inspections, really honest guy, won't scare your clients, even if there is a problem. Um, he's here to show us some things today about um, energy efficient testing and radon testing and everything. All, all, everything. He's going to talk to us about a whole bunch of stuff and he uh, has some demonstrations for us. So I'll leave the floor to you. Thank sure. you. Let's make sure that you're in view there. Yep. Hey, there good go. morning. I'm Blair <laughs> White's last name. Um, there's some brochures on the side there. So I've been at this 16, 17 years. I don't know, something like that. Lose track of time, right? Um, so welcome for your new digs. This, this is fantastic looking. Yeah. Yeah, it looks much nicer. I love it. Um, so are there any new agents in here? Like less than a few years? Oh, okay. Excellent. All right. Well, maybe I'll get to know you then. Um, I'm sure you have lots of questions. We can cover inspections. So what I do, so I'll I'll run down what, what my services are, okay? So we do home inspections, obviously. Condo when you need it, townhomes, detached, large, small, doesn't matter. Uh, I do commercial inspections up to 50,000 square feet. So it can be a warehouse, it can be a, a, an industrial setting, like we're not checking the industrial things, but... Um, we also do, um, you can see energy audits, right? So this is what, this is part of an energy audit. This get up here. Uh, I do mold air sampling. So I'm surprised that that's not more of a service for me, considering how much rain we had in what, June? August or uh, May, June, it's pretty crazy. Um, and then I also do, uh, I have thermal imaging. Okay. Now, one thing that I'm thinking about, and maybe we'll just lead in with that is radon. So I don't know if anybody saw that recent news. They did a study for the last five years across Canada. They came out with this new study. And, yeah, they're saying one in five homes now actually have radon issues. So I, I always thought it was just pockets here and there in, in Canada, but they're saying no, it can be anywhere now. So that's kind of a scary thing. I don't know if you guys know, understand radon. It's a, it's a mineral buried in the bedrock that can somehow leach up through the ground in the basements. So if you have cracks in the basements, whatever, you mine money ones, um, and you have some negative air pressure, it can actually suck in this radon. So. I know on the East Coast, there's a there's one of our counterparts for Amerispec is there. He does a ton of radon because they're it's a hot spot for radon. And he's told me, so he's done readings. It's like a two, three day thing where they set up monitors, right? And, and they and they it's all computerized. They they read all these readouts. And he said he's actually seen situations where the kids are in the basement, there's a storm outside, and because they can track it by time over that 48 hour period. And the wind's blowing really hard. They can see the radon spike coming right through the while that wind's blowing. And these kids are watching TV on the floor like that. So that's what radon, radon can really lead to, I guess, dancing. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to become a thing, but if people get worried about it, then I might introduce it as a service. So I'd have to get the equipment. Right now, I don't have the equipment. All right. Um, so that's one service that I'm, I'm thinking about. The other thing that I do, and I'll... I've got it set up here. This is the mold sampling kit. The air, mold air sampling kit. I'll prop that up a little better. My props playing like a magician here. Anyways, um, so these are the air canisters. We set this up in various strategic places of the home. Okay, so I do get the odd call, maybe two a month, just to go out and do mold sampling. Somebody's worried. We don't do tenant situations, so we will if it's the owner asking for it, but not tenants. We can't get involved in that because we need you have as a tenant, you have to have permission from the owner to do mold test. So if they request that, I say sorry, get a lawyer, right? So tenants have those rights to uh, go that way. But anyways, we we set these canisters up. We run it for ten minutes on agreed upon places. Or, or my recommendations, that just sits in there and we run it through this. So when we're done that, we take two or three samples 
I overnight courier them to Mississauga. And then usually before the turnaround's usually pretty good. Right now it's next day. I don't know if they're overly busy or not, but it's pretty good next day. Um, usually two days max. Okay, so we can tell you the type of mold, severity mold, um, and uh, and uh, recommendations on how to deal with it. Okay. So, yeah. yep. Go ahead. Any questions? Just yeah, yeah. the mold is present. Uh, this is for the basement, right? Well, anywhere in a house. Right. We, it's a basement, finished basement, right? If the mold is inside the drywalls, how are you going to find our steel? Is going to well, I can, even though it's inside the drywall, it can still be airborne. Mm -hmm. If I get permission from the homeowner, I can drill a hole. And we have these tubes. So this hooks onto this, and we insert just the drill. We drill a hole, and we put it inside the wall. Now, I was in a home recently, and uh, he, he swore he smelled mold. I couldn't smell anything. Did the did the uh, original air sample, and he, I said, well, there's, I used my thermal camera, and there was a bit of a damp spot on the wall. So I said, why don't we insert this in there? He gave me permission, drill a hole, put it in. Sure enough, it came back pretty high mold content inside the wall. So you can do it. It's very limited, though, by the studs, right? So if you don't hit the right spots, Nothing, nothing new. If you've got severe mold, you're going to be cutting drywall anyways, right? So usually first thing does for insurance companies, if you say you have water damage in a basement, two feet come off right away, all the way around, right? They cut, that's when you see that line across. So a little clue for me as an inspector that there's been water damage. All right, um, questions on mold? Do you guys see a lot of it? <laughs> Basement apartments? I see lots of basement apartments. I get a lot of uh, attic sites. Attics? Oh, the attic, yeah. Yeah, insulation site. Yeah, they let the roof go, the shingles get too old, leeches in. Attic mold is a bit of a different thing. We don't really test for it, though. Okay. Yeah. You get a report after for the mold? You get a report from the lab. So would it be prudent, like we just sold a foreclosure that was really badly water damaged. Once they remediate it, could we call you to make sure there's no mold? Out that there? is a very good thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So just yeah. to say, hey, it's fixed. You know you have mold, you get it all out. But that, so scrubbing the air is a very different thing. Mm -hmm. Mold can stay in the air a lot longer. Just opening the windows won't get rid of mold. You have to pretty much scrub the air, they call it. They put in air scrubbers. Depends how severe it is. So you can blow it out. You can do all kinds of things. But getting a test afterwards is a good idea because then you can say, hey, there's no mold in my house. Right? If you're selling. Yeah. You rip it out. I see I see plenty of homes in Scarborough with the 1950s finished basement or 40-year-old finished basement. You know it's going to be damping. Right? Concrete block walls, you know it's damping, right? So um, that very good service, reasonably priced. It's about the cost of a home inspection on top of the home inspection. That I <laughs> so I get the home inspection and the bill. So, all right, but I have to pay for the courier and all that. All right. Um, so that is the air sampling monitor there. I just turn it on. Ten minutes of air quality time, whatever. We don't do air quality in general. Do you, does that, do you know the difference between mold and air quality? So I get calls once in a while for noxious fumes um, or, you know, smoke. How do we get rid of smoke? Stuff like that. We don't do that kind of air quality test. That takes two or three days. And it's a, the equipment they used to have was $3,000 just to buy it. Uh, but never got any calls. I, I didn't invest in it. Some of the other guys did. They, it was a waste of their time. It's it's really fun. I don't know what your experience is. Like, I don't get a lot of calls for air quality. Do you guys hear about? Hey, but if it was my home, I wouldn't live in a home that's got bad air, right? You need to be doing the right thing, especially if you have kids. If you're adults, I don't care. You make your own decision. But if you have kids, right, or older people, then we'll help you out. Uh, so any questions on mold or um, what do we do? What do we do? Oh, radon. radon. <laughs> any questions on those? 
so far? Yeah. How much is going to cost that to uh, remove? So, so there's different ways they do that. They do it. I think they do a dry ice now for the the attic mold. Do they not? They come in and kill it, let it drop, whatever they do, and then they seal it. So I think it's around twenty five hundred bucks for a smaller, an average detached home, like a small one or or a town home, right? Um, so they have to remove the insulation out, right? They don't have to remove the insulation. It depends on how bad, how damp everything is. If everything's really damp, then yeah, you're gonna get rid of it all, right? But you can have mold on that on the outside, um, but not. But your insulation's okay. When they kill it, when they use the dry ice, it just falls. It's it's dead. You don't want to reactivate it, but that's my understanding. I don't get involved in the actual remediation part as much. Right? I did that years ago. Technology keeps changing. You can paint it in, they can seal it in, and then it doesn't come so back. Do that to somebody else. No, no, no. We only test. We only do the testing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, part of an attic though is how bad is that plywood now? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. If it's deal, so anybody know what delamination is? Of the plywood, the yeah. underside of your roof. Delamination is the weakening of the plywood after it gets wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry. It starts to feel crunchy. So the the issue with that is when that happens, the shingle nails that they it'll pop out. They can pop out. It doesn't hold. So if you try to reshingle over really cruddy plywood, it won't hold. So that's the issue. All right, but I'm not going to give it all. You should just call. <laughs> so for the mold, right? Yeah. You just only find out whether, whether it is there or not. Right? Yeah. The well, people, you have some company you partner with, or no, I don't get involved in that kind of referral. Just fine. Like attic mold is somewhat common, right? Maybe one in ten homes I see it, varying degrees. Some are really bad, and I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into why that happens. So, it's mostly uh, due to the leakage, right? Sometimes you mostly due to leakage, but there are living conditions that can cause it. There's, you know, it's the age of home, um, style of home. It's all kinds of factors right, that we look for. But I mean, those are things when I'm with a buyer, I'm gonna say these are the things you need to do. So once we get it killed, then what do you need to do? It's not just Kill it and yeah. leave it. You got to do things Maybe. to get the airflow, right? So airflow through the attic. So, um, all right. We should we how 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 am I doing? We've got time. We've got time. Yeah. Let's go fifteen minutes. Right? <laughs> Trying to pace myself. It's been a long time, as I say. I don't think we've had a presentation since pre-COVID. Yeah. Anyone? Mm -hmm. Have you had office meetings? We have, we yeah. have. We're pretty good about it. We're trying you, to be really consistent. Sometimes. You had meetings without me? Yeah. <laughs> My price just went up. Um, okay, so has anybody understood what an energy audit is? Anybody ever done an energy audit on their own home? Okay. So other than buy, when you're buying, you do a home inspection. This is probably the next best thing you can do for your home. I've done it three times on my house. You save a lot of money, right? With the energy. You can save money, but you learn a lot from a different perspective about your home. Right? There's actually a lot of things that you can uh, figure out. Um, so when I was doing my basement, sealing it up and finishing it, I kept I did it twice and kept finding gaps as I was doing it, and then I'd seal up the gaps and figure it all out. So hopefully that charged the other. So that's my thermal camera. So when we're doing an energy audit. Um, so there's government programs. Everybody understands that, that there's rebates available. They're ongoing all the time, whether they're good, like the last program, the Greener Homes one, which was 6,500 on a um, e pump. E -pump. E -pump. Oh my God. I lost a lot of air over that program. Um, that was a really good program. Windows were 375 per window. That would, I did my windows. A lot of people did their windows at that time. So um, there's still a program available through Enbridge. Five Gs, thousand bucks on the heat pump. So I still get maybe two or three calls a week to do an audit. Not like before. Not the greener homes. The greener homes, I was getting 25 calls a week, 30, 35, in like hundreds. We did, I think, 1,500 full audits from 
beginning to end over two years. Now, that's a lot of work. There's a lot of steps. Um, but as I say, they're still going. You can get right now up to me on an average size detached home about a thousand bucks on a heat pump. All right. Uh, the greener homes loan is anybody know about that? So these are things you should know about when you're buying or selling because you can educate your clients as to, hey, this thing needs new homes, but there's a loan available up to 40 G's interest free. Does anybody know that? Did you know it's $40,000 interest free for through the government to do energy upgrades to your home? Yeah, you did. It's, it's, I did it. My payments on my entire house for all my windows and doors are ridiculously low. 230 bucks a month for 10 years. But it's not to be ordered house, right? Not necessarily. Well, I mean, you wouldn't do it to a new home because you got new windows. Yeah. But if, yeah. they don't have to be old windows. They just You just have to be replacing them with energy efficient, energy star windows that qualify. Even three, four years old, the house? Even yeah, huh? if you want to, yeah, it doesn't matter. They don't give much money on but their house. Not... Well, I think the minimum is six months old. Why, but you, why would you spend the money on a brand new home? It is already have a thermal windows and things yeah. like that. Like yeah, it's already got at least yeah. double panes and yeah. the windows. They give a rebate. Yeah, that's the ones that are 30 years or more, 25 years yeah, old. That, that, replacing all their windows. They're doing the audit, getting the loan. Uh, as I say, I get 38000 on my home that's like 15 windows two sliders a front door and a bay window so that to me i couldn't afford that if that was coming out of my own pocket so thanks to trudeau and his buddies up, take that interest free loan right over 10 years is no problem so those are the kinds of things so you got a buyer who's got some objections on this thing has old windows the attic needs work get the loan do an audit. Tell them there's a way around this. Deal with the seller, maybe negotiate both. How much is the total rebate right now for the windows and uh, heat pump and everything else? The rebates, man. Nah. It's only 50 <laughs> bucks a window now. Oh. That's why I try to get both, but a lot of people are just going for the loan. The heat pump, they give you uh, a rebate, right? Yeah, it's been a thousand bucks six, now. Thousand? No, oh, it ended. It ended February 4th. They oh, pulled the okay. plug quickly. Now the tool was giving the hundred thousand too for our construction too. <laughs> no taxes? Is that what you're talking about? This is going to be a political situation. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about that rule. I'd like to get on that one. Anyway, so so when we do an audit, so they call us, they want to get the loan. So this is the blower door. Okay, we we go in with our thermal camera. This one's a pretty good one. You can see a lot. This one's really detailed. I can see a lot of things. What's that? Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, um, so we get so after we do a whole thing for the house. We we measure the house, we measure the windows and doors. We have this software. It's it's very technical, um, and it outputs a, an energy report. But as we're going through with the home manager, we can see things like moisture, like that. Not like moisture, but we can see if there's been a leak and if there's enough of the temper temperature differential, we can see that. We can see in a basement if there's no insulation like my three sixty homes finished, right? Or it's really crummy, right? So we just go around, we we tell them what they need. We make those recommendations, right? Um at the end of that, we do the floor door. So that's when this becomes particularly useful because in the winter, especially, we get this on the front door, we start sucking air through that front door, it pulls in all that cold air through every gap in the home. Okay, so the point is, if you have a home that's really leaky, we need to try to bring it down to a good range. If you have a home that's too tight, you need to maybe get an air, a ventilator in, right? So I've seen both. I've seen one in uh, Ajax maybe a couple months ago where they had mold all on the windows everywhere. And I'm looking around going, home's only 15 years old, why is there so much mold? Six people living in there, plants everywhere, dogs, cats. I'm like, everybody's showering. I'm like, you need a ventilator. They have to put it in an HRV, heat recovery ventilator, bring in fresh air. Home's just too tight. It's too modern and not too much going on. 
So we this is what we can detect is that home was too tight. It was not, there's a natural air leakage that range that you should be at. That's again, that leads back to air quality. You don't have a home that's too tight. You're probably gonna end up with air quality issues. So this is the things that an air energy audit can show you. Physically, we can show you the readouts. We can show you the reports and tell you, yeah, you're at this range. This is no good. Or you are you may as well have your windows open all year because your home's that leaky. I've seen that downtown Toronto, those big Victorian style homes. I've had clients, what should I do? They're down the house. I don't know. There's just no hope for this thing, right? So, um, so, well, yeah. to, so when you, how, how do you suggest, like, because the more inspection doesn't come with the whole inspection package, right? No, so no. Everybody waiting first, and then you suggest them whether you can Yeah, them. home inspections first always when you're yeah. buying, right? Then you go, maybe they move in. You, you mentioned that the mold is there. No, home inspection. Right? No, no, it's not included. I can... But when, you go, to, when you go to acting, you can see, right? Oh, you can see that, but we're not testing. No, not testing. No, but we're not. You, I'm going to tell you. But you, you write the report. This yeah, morning. I, well, we suspect. We can't verify it. That's the problem. There's, we never say it's actually mold because there's 2,000 types of mold. We can't tell you which one it is. That's why you'll never, you'll never get confirmation, right? Until you get a test. Um, we so that's a separate. They're all separate services add add-ons. Mm -hmm. The first priority is the inspection, and then you get people moving in and finding out there's issues. Then you can get this kind of stuff done. Right. So, yep. You talked about HRV. What is that? HRV is a heat recovery heat recovery ventilator. If your home's too tight, is it different from heat humidifier? Or is it yeah, different? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So so uh, what it is is uh, you'll see it on a new home. You know those ones that hang on chains yeah, yeah, near the yeah, furnace? Yeah. You you smack your head on yeah. Yeah. with the sharp corners? Yes. That's an HRV. All right. So watch your head on. I've hit a couple. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those, I've seen people with rubber all over them in their homes, right? Because they smack their head on. I don't know why they put them right there. Right? It's a mandatory for the new homes, right? Yeah. It is. The, the thing with those is the builder quickly, you know, you buy a brand new home, they show this is your HRV this way, and then they client forgets. Guess what? Those things get plugged and moldy. Now you've, now you've created an issue because you're not maintaining it. But they're so simple to maintain. It's a really easy thing. You just open it, get a vacuum or wash the filter, put it back in and run it. But I see so many broken down, clogged, not checked, and they're breathing. You're Again, you're breathing bad air again because you're not maintaining it. Not too many people know about that. That's exactly it. That, yeah. Yep. And then, you know, I have seen mold growing in them and they're sick. And then I open it up and go, well, you got mold in here. Did you not know to clean it? Can the ads tell you need to the existing service? You can. Yeah. yeah. As long as there's space around, like, how much is it close? To add it in, probably 1500 now, 2000 max. You can do it while you're changing so if you want. Again, it, it's if you have. Uh, a home that's too tough. It's not, or on a new home. But just make the same. Or call and start. All right. Call me. I'll, I'll show you. No problem. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Can you tell us more about the like your service charges later on? or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get to that. All right, I'm going to show you. So this is so. This is basically, a, you know, we we take a base reading here. Just going to quickly show you, just because I have all these props today. Yeah, I should get uh, Christine to stand behind it. Like Dana. Exactly. <laughs> so this goes in the front door. It you know it fits tight. Uh, we close all the windows and doors around the exterior. And we set this up. We take a base reading. And then we and then we uh, take this off. That's so that diameter there, right? These are all very measured things we do. So they know exactly how much airflow can go through that at which speed and pressure. So we can met so then they can read it and we can feed it all into a 
whatever software, and it can tell you exactly where you're at for the prep for the uh, air leakage in your home. I think it's pretty smart software. It can tell you if you have a lot of a few large holes or a lot of small holes in your home. So, right, we can actually help you. So this gets set up. You start taking readings. Hopefully the structure here is good. <laughs> right, so we just take readings all the way up to minus 50 kilopascals and then all the way down to 15. The experiment is 10, 15 minutes to run it. As we're doing that, that's when I'm doing the camera. That's when I'm going around the house, the homeowner, showing, hey, look, see that door, the garage door? You got winter coming right through it. All right? Happens all the time, right? Or in the base, like, you know, the, the rim doors, the, the headers. Like, you see the air flow all the time coming through. So this is great to know how well a case we can finish or not. As we've seen, um, but you can learn a lot. Static action, all of the Very dramatic action, it's made up. Because you're eating in the house. So once we're done that, um, that's the first part of the energy audit. And then you do your upgrades, and then we come back and do this again. So we, we, we are advising homeowners, you know, you got a leaky house, you should do the rim joist in the basement, you should do the attic hatch, you should do that garage door, get it tightened up. You may be able to get 180 bucks right now for air sealing on top of whatever other upgrades you're doing. That's it. Now, they used to give 800 bucks on the air sealing, down to 180. Woo it does help you. In your home, you can, as I said, you can live a lot more comfortably. So you don't have to be doing the rebate or the program. I've done energy audits for people who just want to know about their home. They don't, they don't have any clue. They just know they're freezing to death in, in one or two rooms, and they don't know why. So we do that. Or I had a recent situation this summer where this young couple bought this row home in uh, Upper Beaches. You know those old ones. You would think a row home. The two adjoining walls wouldn't be that leaky, right? It was like, it was like we could, I, I couldn't even really figure it out after all this. But we, I suspected it was coming right through the walls from the neighbors, right, right through its house. So there was no ceiling between the two units on either wall. And they were like, oh my God. So what you mean I'm breathing all their air? Yeah, you are. So how do you resolve that? Well, you start taking off. The baseboards and maybe sealing up the bottom where the, where the bottom plate meets the floor. Try something like that, right? That's Incrementally, right. we can help you out. I said, do some things. I'll come back and rerun it and see how far you're. Right. So, and he, he wasn't. He's not interested in any rebates. He just wants to know. So, that's what I say. The second best thing you can do is do an audit on your home. You can learn a lot. All right. Um, so we've done re. We've done the. Audits, mold sampling, like radon. Yes, yeah, ceiling or balcony, right? Air ceiling? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to move for the windows you put in the main level. Yeah, but then the, the ceiling, ceiling that's in long for uh, long for a long time, right? Like for maybe a year, then you have to redo that or what air sealing around your windows? If you're replacing your windows, uh, like the contractor is doing it properly now. Yeah. Right? 30 years ago, they didn't have those little spray tubes for foam, right? Yeah. So even 25 years, you get 25 year old windows, you'll probably have air leakage behind that. Just the, you know, the wood molding, the, the window mold. You take that off. I <laughs> I lived in a house in Pickering in a town home and I was, the window was leaking. So I took the, the, the window mold off. I could see the street. <laughs> that was the only thing not like I was looking outside going, oh my God, no wonder why it's leaking, right? There was nothing in it. The builder did that. So if you got 25-year-old windows, it's probably not. Even just for that, for, for air leakage, right? Depends how well the home is built. Was it a custom home or was it an out-of-the-box home like you see in Milton where there's thousands of homes built in 10 months, right? So, um, 
Any other questions right now? How are we doing for time? That's a half. Is that a half hour, 35 minutes? Yeah, it's half hour. Who wanna, so prices, uh, wanna do pricing? I was gonna say, they want to do the swimming pool septic. Uh, I, sorry, you're right, I do swim. I do swim. Septic tanks? No, I'm not, I've arranged for inspection no, no, it's through it's the septic, septic company, company, right? The problem is, who wants to dig it up? And if you're buying a home in the winter, how are you gonna dig it up? So what about grid inspection? Well, well, okay. There's there's well pressure that we can just tell in a home just by running it, and then there's a well inspection. You need to be licensed. To do that. Well, sense, yeah. I have, you have you can't, I, I can't do anything to somebody's well for that. that if you're well not licensed, you well yeah. 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 If you're not licensed, you shouldn't be touching that. Well yeah. 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 So you can do the swimming. Oh, so I can do swimming. Swimming pool. When you say swimming pool, is it uh, indoor or outdoor? I don't like indoor. <laughs> indoor, I can indoor, do a lot of problems. Indoor is a humidification system, right? Can of worms yeah. for indoor pools. Unless it's ventilated properly. Yeah. Right. Um, no, I do I do swimming pools. I troubleshoot print swimming pools. I've got 35 years of swimming pools behind me. So and I just redid mine this year and so I'll tell you that old concrete's pretty heavy. I only had to cut one section out of it and I almost died doing it. So never again. But I had to replace my whole skimmer. All the lines underneath of it. I did all the digging myself to save a bit of money. Won't do that again. I'll leave it to the pool guys next time. Right? But even that was seven grand now. Yeah. It can be expensive. So depending on the age of the pool, you want to get a check. If it's brand new, it's running, it's running fine, it should be okay. Right? Anything over 20 years, you can get a check for sure. Right? 15, even I would say, because the line. Right? There's five G's right there for an average size pool. Yep. Yeah. So this is my, my yeah, basement yeah. in Whitby. We did a recently um, new legal basement. Yeah. You like come talk to me or June, we complete that. Is, is it legal? legal? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Is it registered? Yeah. I called Whitby. I didn't like their answer, so I hung up. No, no, it's good. We, we did We did a drawing. We got approved and then a buyer deposit. Okay, good, good. Good. So you went the extra mile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everything is there. But is there a chance to grow more within a couple of months? Brand new basement? Yeah. If it is Modern a home? Huh? Like a concrete, poor concrete yeah. foundation? Yeah. Yeah. Why would it? Unless, if you've done the right things, it shouldn't. Unless they have a leak, they didn't tell you. Yeah, if there's a leak, there's a sounds too well. Well, that's the point of finishing basements sometimes. Yep. They hide all those cracks. Yeah, so it's, it's we do the best we can with the thermal camera. Yes, best yes. time of the year yes. is yes. past yes. fall yes. when it's really cold outside yes. and you get it yes. stoked up nice and hot in the house. The thermal camera can show you how hot it is. I can see water at that point. Yes. In the summer, it's very hot. Yes. Temperature is not that so, um, so yeah, I do swimming pools as an add-on to a home inspection. I only charge like 150 bucks to run it. So I will actually, you know, the filter. So the the, uh, the port on the top. Okay. So I will run those. The backwash, the uh, the rinse cycle. I will I will roll out that hose. I got soaked the last one I did, by the way, because it got kinked and it burst all over. I was like, all right, should have done the pool last. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so I do roll it out. I do check it all out, right? Um, and make sure that it's running fine as well. Um, and pressure stuff. So. That's good. Do you find problems? Do you find problems? Most sales we do, when you ask the homeowner, everybody gets the same answer. It was fine last summer. Yeah, yeah, it was right? fine last summer. It was fine last summer. So they know they there's issues they coming. Wanna, yeah. If they didn't already have an issue, they probably know it's coming. I haven't sold the house that anybody's guaranteed the pool. Have you guys? They always say it was fine last summer. Yeah. Or we didn't use it last summer. Yeah. That's the other. It's the one or the other. I find problems, yeah. right? Where, you know, you have two or three jets in the pool, but one's not working. So they cut the line because it was probably leaking or whatever, right? What do you think? Most of the older pools are... Are actually really strong with the bill. Mine's 35 years old. 
and it's built into a hill, which was a terrible idea in the first place. Um, but even though the deck actually moved, the whole deck moved by that much from the hill, the walls did not move. You would think that, the, that but it is such strong steel they used back then. It was thick galvanized steel. It's not rusted, it hasn't moved, and it's rock solid still. I've had two pool guys in. I even, so I was cutting the deck, I, I cut through one of the stanchions, you know, underneath the, uh, what is it, an A-frame, I guess. I cut through one, didn't even budge. So that, some of the older pools are really, really strong. So it's not always a concern. You've got to look at it. We've got to see what it is. Um, so that's an add-on, about 150 bucks. Um, if there's extra waterfalls and all that, I'm not getting into that. <laughs> I'm not doing waterfall and all that. Because then they had like three pumps, you know, they got different switches to turn to make them run. I don't, if, unless you're the homeowner, you're not going to know. The sprinklers helps that. The spring? Sprinklers. Like the sprinklers, we don't test sprinklers. Ask the homeowner if they've been blown out every winter. Um, if they're not blown out every winter, they're probably no good. Okay. They freeze, they crack, they're no good. Yeah. Um, so standalone home inspection, I don't, or a uh, swimming pool, I don't really do. Nobody checks them unless they just call the pool. Yeah. So you take the uh, sump pumps, uh, sewer pumps, and everything else? I do check sump pumps, yeah. ejector pumps, yeah. you just flush. So I did one the other day. Um, yeah, I check sump some, pumps. Some I pump stick my hand in there. I've gotten shot before. From yeah, it can be a few inches used to a sump pump, right? If it is clocking, if they don't have a backup. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, so, you know, it's got a float valve. So I got to reach yeah. down in there yeah. and pull that float. I got shocked a couple times from oh, leakage sure. in, the, oh, in yeah. the motor. Yeah. Right? It's not a terrible shock because it's only 15 now. Like, yeah, right? This is why they pay me well. <laughs> well, yeah. um, so a home inspection now I'm at 450, 475, 500 for a decent sized home, right? It depends on the situation, where I'm going, right? I'm still reasonably priced, I'm not the highest, I'm not the lowest, right? But it's um, so how much is it for a remit is are you giving any discount? No, <laughs> you get my brain. Keep, keep in mind, you get my entertainment. Yeah. You get my yeah. entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Like so what? Mind, he's not the inspector that takes the camera Who's the Bills fan? Who's he's, the Bills fan yeah. here? Anybody know a football fans? <laughs> oh, what about a Leaf fan? Any Leaf fans? Uh, what about that map? Nah, is he any good or not? Uh, he's gone. He looks like a bum, doesn't he? <laughs> he's not playing like a captain, is he? Yeah. 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 You hire a captain. <laughs> I'm the captain. Right? I'll get them motivated. So some of us uh, do the inspection before listing the house, and we wanted to have the clean report uh, in order yeah. to present the house, right? Pre-listing. So, so pre-listing. So you log the free inspection, you find some mistakes and you come back and collect it and then He'll give us a report. clean report saying that everything is yeah. okay. We've done it with him before. So you have to prove you that chance, time, two times to do that, right? I'm not gonna come back just for a couple of crack tiles or something weird, like something small. You guys wanna clean that up, that's fine. Yeah, okay. if but it's if it's a, something that I've sent you a picture before where you've switched it in the report if it was something that we fixed. Yeah, it depends okay. on what that Yeah, like if it's over mold, he's not gonna do that. But if yeah, I don't know, you're yeah. like this neat, this is a trip hazard for the railing. We'll yeah. take a picture and I will take on, stuff yeah. like that. Trip yeah. hazards, yeah. railings missing, stuff like that. I don't care if it's stuff. But what what if if the customer wants to Come back and check again, and what would be a charge? Is it, is it like charge? for a, what do you mean check? Second, second time. If they have to fix oh, yeah, something, you have to. Like, like, we just wanted to know. Are you on a, on a fire or on a pre-list? On a pre-list. Pre 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 nobody ever pre asked you to come back. But no. if the customer wants it, and you want yeah. to charge them, or are you want to give us? If it's close by, no, I don't. Do you know what a good rule of thumb is, though? Just a side note: if you have a completely clean pre-list inspection that looks suspicious. You have to have yeah. something wrong. There's no house that's perfect. If I right? out some so that, it looks dishonest. Right? So you want a few things in there that you know, oh, it needs this, this might need some sealant, this might need some, mm -hmm. I don't know, upgrading or something. You get a know? perfect report, I go, yeah, right. Yeah. Because 98% of homes are not perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, this is right. Right. 
No, 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 you do the inspection on the tiny home and Lola? Oh, we do carry on, yeah. I do carry on not very often. People trust their builders. I don't know if that's a good thing. No, no, no. Right? Who's done their carry on warranty inspection before? Fine. Anything wrong? Did they find it or did they talk you out of it? No, no, they found it. They found it. Okay. So. There are cases where they miss stuff, where they try and talk you out of it being a oh, oh, issue, yeah, right? Yeah. I've seen that. I've had those arguments with, with the, not with the builder, but there's the builder will come back and say, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. And then I'm saying, yeah, 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 there is an issue there. <laughs> right? So you get into those, right? So Yeah, they do a free delivery inspection, right? That inspection you cannot believe. So How long do you get? Do an hour, maybe? Can you yeah. Know? yeah, sometimes. I've found problems on ADIs. I have. Going with the buyer and with the builder and saying, look, this is not the right thing to do. So it depends what it is. Because the one thing is about builders, they want, so once they get near the end, they want to get that thing done and close and get that yeah, yeah, occupancy yeah. permit. So they will glue things. I've yeah. seen them snap a couple of air gun bang, bang, bangs into things, and that's it, right? They just see, see, uh, recently I had a big pre delivery inspection. Yeah. There's a big, big problem is that, you know the when the when the bricks comes, uh, the you know the bricks, right? Yeah. Uh, they bring in the pallet, right? Uh, and most of the brick at the front. It's damaged in the corner. Yeah. Now, if I don't know what they're going to do with that, if you inform me. It's so hard to do. I know. Whether they're going to reduce the money or do Was something. Was that for a client of yours? Yeah. So, in the industry right now, I went, I've seen this because I did a couple of PDIs in Markham at uh, 16th between Markham Road and McAllen. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll the big, big homes, yeah. no backyards. You know those ones? Yeah. The front looks beautiful, but the sides, there's like Alignment issues. It looks like three different crews worked on it. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one of the issues in the industry. There's not enough bricklayers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There, and, the, and the ones they do, some of them are junior and they're saying, go do that house. Yeah. I'll do the front, you do the sides. And you can tell the difference. You can see it. It's night and day sometimes. And you're looking at the home, the new new buyer going, they're going, what do I do? I go. I don't know. Talk to your builder, but they're probably not going to do anything about it yeah. unless it's a structural you, deficiency. Yeah, like, yeah. If it's a structural deficiency, then yeah. you might have a case. But if it's cosmetic, cosmetic, yeah, you you get what you get right now because there's not brick. Who wants to do brick lane? Any of your kids want to do brick lane? <laughs> Anybody? I put money though. Right? Oh, it's good money. They'll pay you well. Is it good money or not? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a huge. But it's hard work. So Twelve thirty dollars yeah. and I skip it. It's hard work though. That's I guess that's part of the uh, problem. So. What about that teeth like the field of mice? Have you ever come across? Oh, yeah. mice! Mice are in everything. Almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you? Part of the life, right? It's, it's in my. I live on a ravine. <laughs> I live on a ravine. I battle these guys every winter. Every winter, I get. Uh, I'm looking for. Them. I used to have a. I used to have a Jack Russell. He was good at getting his nose and finding them, whacking them. He would whack them, whack. Right, or a cat again. The problem. So if if you have mice, don't keep any food in your garage, because that'll just attract. Then they'll get in there. That's for sure. Again, an energy audit. Good Lord. Might find those gaps. I find gaps all the time where you wouldn't even suspect it, but that's how the mice are coming. You know those AC lines that you're, yeah. that you're wonderful HVAC guys put through your house, cut yeah. the brick, yeah. and then they didn't bother seeing it. They just yeah. stuck some insulation in there. <laughs> I've seen gaps that big that squirrels can go in and out. Right? Just recently, I saw. I'm looking at it. Oh, yeah, something's been in and out because you can tell all the insulation was packed down. I think something's been going in and out of the house. That's those, are the, those are those guys. Um, what else for pricing? Um, so, energy audits about 750 for the pre and the post. So, that includes both the first and the second. First one we charge 475, second one 275. 
right? Uh, larger homes go up a bit. Right? Um, mold, as I say, that's about fourth cost of a home inspection. Because right? I pay for these on my visa. These are all paid for already for the lab fees. But then I just have to courier them. So each one of these babies is about 40 bucks for the lab fee included, right? U.S., I think, actually, because <laughs> it's a U.S. thing. Everything's U.S. This setup here, who wants to guess the price of these things buying new? Oh, my God. 500, 500. Six Gs U.S. for the whole setup. That's so uh, pre-COVID, 3,500. Oh, my God. They put it up to six just to get these done. So these are supposed to be calibrated every year. You didn't hear me say that. Um, 500 US to send them to the US to the states to get calibrated per machine. That's what they want. <clears throat> so it's just insane what, what's going on, right? But that's why our prices have to. So you can't buy them in Canada? You know, you can't buy them in Canada. Many, it's called a Minneapolis floor. There's one other company that does. You can buy them in Canada, but they're all made in the US, right? You're just paying a lot. Um, and any, sorry, just get for the energy, any windows you buy have to be manufactured in Canada. You cannot import it if you want the rebates or the loan. They have to, they have to have proper stickers. They have to be manufactured in Canada. And by the way, um, Pella, Pella windows, you know, Pella, P-E-L-L-A, -L -L yeah. most of their windows don't qualify. They're good windows. They'll last you 40 years, but they don't qualify because they don't bother testing them because they base their reputation on quality. And the mechanisms are really good, right? The uh, opening, the locking, the cranks. They'll last 40 years, right? but they don't bother doing the energy stuff in most of the windows. So don't, it's happened a couple times. How about the paint and plumbing on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing less and less of it though. Are you guys seeing less than I'm seeing? A lot of the buildings have been remediated. Yeah. yeah. They've been remediated. I think Grandway had one. Yeah, yeah Grandway did. Yeah, did they did. Grandway for sure. Yeah. 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 I've been there. Yeah. I think I had to inspect that condo when I sold it. Was that the one? I, is that the new one at uh, Lawrence and Young Mills? No, the Lawrence and Young Mills. Yeah. Well, there's there's a subdivision at Lawrence and Young, which was all high tech as well, town homes there. Grandway, I know. I've you did do the pre list for that. Sale. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Pharma sales hide. Um, what kind of pharma sales do you do inspections? Right? Say industrial. Commercial? Yeah, industrial. Yeah, like the, you know those strip mall yeah. units. I've but, done those. I've done a lot on the Danforth. So, too. for example, if I do a let's say I bought a restaurant, retail store. What kind of audits uh, would you do there? I mean, we're the just doing building, system. heating. We're just doing electrical. We're not looking at the restaurant stuff. None of that. None of the fire extinguishing systems. Nothing. Okay. Nothing like that. We do the roof. You know, I've done uh, maybe twenty five on Danforth alone in those buildings, those older ones. You know, the row type. Oh my god. Some of those restaurants, they look pretty, but get in the basement. Oh, yeah. yeah scary. Yeah. Very scary. scary. So oh, you have to show the basement, you know. <laughs> I know. You wouldn't go back, right? Yeah, it's, uh, some of those buildings are really old. I think they need a lot of new. Oh, uh, 80, 90, 100 years old. Oh, yeah. For instance, especially grease trap. Oh, you <laughs> I've seen what's in those grease traps. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever done the heritage building? Like, I saw one one, one, one building in Pitti. Uh, it's built from 1850. Yeah. It's supposed to go. Done them. They are, you know, not for every buyer. Right? Buyer beware. <laughs> 150 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've done it. Any other questions you guys want to? Cover off. I don't know. You probably got lots of team thing to do. Anything else? I have to ask approval from Selvin. <laughs>
So by the way, so inspections, the way I work it on a buyer inspection is if there's something that's seriously wrong, I will do a summary within a few hours and get that summary with a photo of whatever the issues are, those major ones, and get that to you right away. So you can start that. Negotiation. Yeah, because I mean, it could be a ten, twenty thousand dollar repair. I mean, can you explain something? The wet basement. People are always talk about wet basement. Most of the people are know you because they don't know what is there. <laughs> Anything with a concrete block basement, you've got probably going to have to control the moisture. That's it. Outside Learn they're control. always running the pipelines and everything. Oh, forget the friggin' pipes. Don't even talk about the weeping tiles because if it's six years old, they're no good. So you disconnect the drains. If you've got a wet basement, you're going to have to do, if you want a dry basement for the rest of the time, you're going to have to do some sort of water. Treatment. That's it. So what is a bylaw now that, uh, say, the holes from the basement water to going out outside connected, you know? The water. Downspout? Sorry, downspout. They have to be that. disconnected. None of them are allowed to connect to the outside the sewage system. No, no, so they have to drain now. Yeah. 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 Those days, I know the, all the basement people, you know, they don't have a proper license or anything. Everybody is bringing the, you know, the back end. Yeah, I know. I know. I think Toronto, just in general, has a water management problem. There's, there's nothing you can do about it. And all the, you know, the backflow preventer valves, you think that's solving our water management problems? No, it's just putting more pressure on the sewage system. Yeah. Right? So now it's not going into the basement. It's now, it's now whoever does get it gets it twice as bad because everybody else is stopping it coming from coming in their face. I think is uh, now uh, for the new houses, most of the water around the house, you have to bring it inside and pump it. You can pump it out. Yeah. You know, like that, that's that well, if you have any basement entry, that should be what's happening, right? Yeah, yeah, you are not allowed to right. connect to the system. No, you can't. You're not yeah. supposed to connect yeah. the internal. Yeah. I know some people are connected, but it's not allowed. I've seen it. You're not supposed to. No. Yeah. No. What do you do in a wet basement, though? You either live with it, get dehumidifiers, or you do some sort of water. Concrete block homes all through server. What are you going to do? Or when you are doing it, you make you can you can put an interior drainage system with the blue what do they call blue studs, the anti mold stuff. Yeah, that would probably give you an extra five to ten years, right? Of no mold. After that, it doesn't matter how blue it is, probably gonna get mold. Is that like the mold, right? To make it, you can see that like it started with the black color and turned into green, like in the walls. Is there any way you can find out before starting with in the walls? Yeah. Again, we do our best with the thermal. Before doing it, like if it was finished, visible, it's visible. Is there any possibility to visit? Do you mean? This? Yeah, on, a, on an inspection. What do you mean? No, no, how can you identify? I mean, like, is so for, oh, if it's on the wall, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can do swab uh, mold if you want. I don't normally, again, right? Everything costs money. Um, I don't even have any right now. Uh, we take a swab, like a Q-tip, we can take that. I mean, if you have black mold... Yeah. Normally, the mold will become like a greenish or the black color. No? There's plant-based molds and then there's black mold, yeah. which is uh, very bad for your health. If you got a little bit, cut it out and get rid of it. If you got it all over your basement, you should probably get the heck out. I was in a home in Starbucks and for the buyer. We were down there for maybe half an hour and finally I said, you know what, we got to get out of here. I'm getting a headache and then somebody else said they were in the molds and we started getting headaches. Was that, it, they knew it was there. And then I realized, okay, this is this is worse than I think. So let's get out. So, that's what it can do to you. I've seen kids with their eyes watering in homes. We have a client throw up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because, mind you, they had to sign to say they, they were going in at their own risk before we did the showing because it was bad. So the bank was making us have them sign. Um, but one of the clients came running up, threw up on the front lawn. Yeah. I refused to go in. I was like, I will open the door and here you go. That was the <laughs> only time I've ever put in a report. If you re-enter the home, we make sure that we're in mass. That's the only time I've ever said that. Yeah. It was that one. <laughs> but I wasn't taking the risk of not telling. That's more of a risk than 
That's why the air quality test is very important, right? So the air quality test. Air quality is huge. I'm, this is why I'm shocked I don't get more calls on mold and air and whatever. Right? It is something to do with the safety and health, right? Yeah, I don't know. But I, mean, I make sure my filters are clean because my, I have a tenure. That's, that's the first step. HRV, if you have one, you better make sure it's clean. <laughs> Who's guilty of not checking our HRV? Anyone? Anyone have an HRV? Yeah. yeah. You do. Yeah. Have you checked it? Yes. Because the builders don't care. <laughs> today, today. Yeah. It's, today. It's, it's, normally, it's, today. it's normally two clips on top or two screws on the bottom. That's it. And then you just open it up. Yeah. You just open it up and pull those filters up, wash them, put them back in. That's it. Everybody pulls up tonight and call with you. Hey, Blair, you're going to say it Next 30 minutes, call someone free. You are. 95% of the ones I open up are, are in bad shape. Because nobody does. These days, every home has a. Uh, and that's going to become a bigger problem. Because the, as I heard, the, uh, for the insulation is a uh, very high standard now. Is the house doesn't breathe well. That's right. So they have to put the air. They're tighter now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More spray foams, right? Now they use around the windows. Yeah, it's so spray. Spray. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, tight. Too tight. Blair left his information over there on the counter. If you guys need any supplies, he's got the right number. Yeah. 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 Yeah.